This very issue has been entertained for centuries. And shouldn't there ever be anyone who treads on thin ice of this topic to question, probe, or offer guidelines to entertainment, you will inevitably face some opposition. In fact, prepare for opposition. But hopes and praise that the principles and arguments brought forth in this sermon will, will enlighten and challenge some young minds as well. As we shall see in his sermon, some not so young minds. Concerning the entertainment of Christians, there are many opinions. And concerning the topic of video games and whether to play them, there are even more opinions. There are many organizations that fight against the video game industry with rapid vigor such as Mothers Against Video Game Addiction, and others which defend the playing of computer games with equal vigor, such as uh, its own gaming centers. Which is correct? Is it entertainment or is it enslavement? In order to understand the issues involved, let's look at the history of video games. As a video gamer, should at least be familiar with one name, Ralph Baer. After all, he is the father of video games. In 1966, he invented the pilot version of Pong. This was, marked, this was then marketed with a system called the Odyssey in 1972. It was a chase game with two spots on the screen that had no sound, no color, no way of keeping score. Subsequently, in 1975, Atari came out with its home version of Pong. Very soon after that, arcade games were invented. This became a money-making industry where manufacturers would spend more money building a unit but received more in returns as gaming, as gaming became centralized with more customers and played it at an affordable price. Then 19, 1982, the famous Atari 2600 was released and the world famous Pac-Man was born. Since video games have been around for a while, it is only natural to assume that many people have played it. In fact, it is without question that we all have either played video games or know someone who does. The average age of video gamers in the USA is 28 years old. And this is probably not very far off from the, from, from the average. If the average is 28, that must mean that many not so young people play video games regularly. Whereas it is not surprising to read that 78% of American children play video games on a regular basis after eight hours a week. So it says the University of Chicago Research. It may shock many to know that a year 2000 survey done revealed that 60% of all men, women, and children surveyed play video games routinely. But when we give this some thought, it shouldn't surprise us. <coughs> Because if the average is 28, that means there's a grown-up in his 30s or 40s or even 70s glued to his video screen. Tom Gillespie, a professor at Indiana University, says, Look, like rock music in the 60s and 70s, the game industry is driving the culture at the moment. And it is indeed a driving culture. Last year, according to CNN, it took more money than even the movie industry. In the U.S., $10.3 billion compared to $9.5 billion. The games aren't just Pong anymore. The systems aren't just Atari anymore. Since the mid-80s, systems have mushroomed up. Nintendo, Sega, Genesis, PlayStation, Microsoft, Xbox. With all these intense graphics, schemes, sounds, etc., the PC gaming industry is also kept up by designing intense software with PC manufacturers and suiting their high-performance chips and graphics cards. And there are also virtual reality gaming rooms springing up. We are sense of touch on top of the usual visual and oral senses is appealed to. Since video games were invented 30 years ago, until now, games have consistently become more realistic with their sound scenes and graphics. What will they be like in the next decade? Increasingly, Christians must be wiser with their entertainment choices. Moral decisions have to be made. But we do, we do need the right kinds of information to make the right kinds of choices. We were kind of, there, are, there are many different kinds of video game categories. In fact, naming the games to different categories and, and to which gaming console media may belong would probably fill up this entire sermon. But here's, here's a brief list to give you an idea of what is out there. Action, adventure, cards, driving and racing, educational fighting, game design, 
MMO, music and dance, puzzle, role playing, simulation, sports and strategy. Under the action adventure games, there are games like Commando, Resident Evil, Behind Enemy Lines, and the famous Tomb Raider series. In Resident Evil 3, the hero Jill Valentine is trapped in a town crawling with hordes of flesh eating zombies, hideous mutants, and a relentless new nemesis. She must rely on cunning and brute force to stay alive. It must do wonders for one's spiritual life to think upon the living dead. On your cards are games like Hearts, Fate, Solitaire, and Biker Solitaire, all found within Microsoft Windows, with which many adults are familiar spending much time during their three hour long lunch breaks. <laughs> Educational games teach players how to type, do arithmetic, and even how to improve vocabulary through Scrabble, simulation games, including flight simulators, the roller coaster tycoon games, which requires the player to design theme parks. And 911 paramedics, which has the player rescue and resuscitate victims of carjackings, murders, heart attacks, etc. A reviewer commented that it was graphically awesome with real life videos that a patient looks so real as a person who tends to gross out easily. I actually had uh, I had to actually shut my eyes through a few procedures like the large and bleeding open wounds. I would not suggest this game to anyone who gets easy easy. The role playing games such games as EverQuest, Final Fantasy, Dungeons and Dragons. Indeed, the goal of the game is to kill an extremely powerful wizard named Kagan, who tortured the land. The players to take on the role of different characters, to cast spells and face hordes of demons. This is also now a global online community playing this game in real time. There are really thousands of games in every category. Gone are the days of Pong, Donkey Kong, and Pac-Man. There are many files in the cult games, but since there are many choices, they can't be all bad. Indeed, not all video games are bad. There are many games, there are many good games which improves one's intellect and academic ability. There was research that identified benefits associated with creative and pro-social uses of, game, of video games, as in physical rehabilitation and oncology. Proponents of video games suggest that there may be a friendly way of introducing children to computers and may increase children's hand-eye coordination and attention to detail. Another research done by Rochester University noted that video gamers have a marked increase in their visual abilities. They can see, focus on, and set the process what is happening around them 30 to 50 percent better than non-gamers. The United States Air Force uses flight simulators to train their pilots before letting them pilot an actual fighter plane. And even the Division of Motor Vehicles is now using driving simulators to instruct about the effects of alcohol and driving ability. With such pros, how can there be any cons? Unfortunately, the cons outweigh the pros. Of course, not all of these cons apply to every video game, but many do. The first disadvantage of video games is their addictiveness. There are many psychologists who are specializing in video game addiction. One study said that one in four teenagers who plays video games feels addicted. Harvard Medical School even has a clinic to go to treating computer addicted people. It is said that symptoms include dry eyes, backaches, skipping meals, neglecting family and friends, lying about computer use, and feeling euphoria when sitting at the computer. But aside from such symptoms, there are also many other signs of addiction. Video game addicts will usually think about the games throughout the day, especially about how they can beat it and ascend to the next level. <coughs> Your minds will visualize the various obstacles and device strategies and solutions. Your conversations will also be centered around the game. If they are not thinking about it, they will be talking about it with their friends or in online chat rooms. A big indicator of addiction is temperament. Their mood is affected when the game is interrupted, especially by a parent who calls them to do their homework. Of course, the most obvious indicator is that the amount of time that is spent on the game. Addicts can spend an enormous amount of time playing, staying up as late as 5 a.m., even though they do have work, school, church the next day. In other words, of an addict, you can just stop. You can't. You just can't stop playing. I, I just couldn't stop. I just wanted one more game. It turned into two, three hours. And in the height of this addiction, he played six to eight hours a night. We are told in 1 Corinthians 6.12 that all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. This is a sobering thought, 
Even the secular world knows how powerful it can be. Which is why Video Game Credit Association President Douglas Lotus being issued the following statement about video game addiction. All those who play computer video games need to take personal responsibility to ensure they use the games in a sensible and appropriate way. As tens of millions of people do every day, how sad is it when the Christian who is supposed to have a victory over sin is beaten by the tens of millions of unbelievers in this area? The second disadvantage of video games is the time wasted playing games. As Hesians 5 6 says, <coughs> us, us to redeem the time because the days are evil. How can we redeem the time if we spend eight hours or even one behind a game console? Many students are unable to stay up in their classes or for that fact in Sunday services because of the inordinate amount of time they spend awake at night. And a major complaint teachers have concerning their students is that they don't complete their homework. And, they, and the reason given is, is that they lack time. No kidding, in order to beat a game it takes days of gaming. But what reward is there at the end of, one, of a thousand hours of gaming? Absolutely nothing, so you beat the game. The third disadvantage of video games is that they distract from the important things in life. First Peter 5, 8 says that we are to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom may, who he may devour. Satan can surely use video games to distract us from our spiritual lives, from our family lives, and from pursuing the things to which the Lord has called us. It's almost comical when family members fight over the use of the computer, and sad, really, when they can spend the time worshiping God together. There's a real sense of a fight erupting between father and son because the father wanted to finish his spider solitaire game which he had played for the past three hours. The fourth disadvantage of video games is that they promote wickedness. Ezekiel 5, 5, 11 and 12 tells us to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in Christian secret. Any Christian will tell you it is wrong to commit murder, adultery, and theft. These are, after all, the six, seven, eight commandments. However, they don't want, they don't want, they won't bat an eyelid when it is done virtually. The verse tells us that as Christians, we should not only stay away from doing the evil things the world is doing, but we should not even talk about them or find out about them. Yes, in the game, grant that thought of, Players are to murder mobsters, have sex with prostitutes, and steal cars, all in order to gain points. This is currently a $246 million, is currently a $246 million lawsuit filed against the makers of the game by the families of two people shot by teenagers inspired by the game. The teenagers told investigators that they got the rifles from a locked room in their home and decided to randomly shoot at tractor trailer rigs, just like in the video game. The fifth disadvantage the video games is that they are harmful to your body and mind. Aside from the dry eyes and back aches mentioned earlier, there are reports of video games causing death. A man in Thailand recently died due to the fact that he played Half-Life, Counter-Strike Online. The 22-year-old man was hospitalized after he collapsed at an internet cafe in Chiang Mao. Due to cardiac-related problems, he died. As it turned out, he had played CS for more than 24 hours. The anger and physical degradation became fatal. There was a report in late 2002 which alleged that a Korean man died after playing video games nonstop for 86 hours. And 10 days later, a Taiwanese man died after playing for 32 hours continuously. Video games are also harmful to the mind. They have become so realistic it can be hard to tell the difference between the violence there and the violence in our life. And hence, we become desensitized to violence as it stretches our tolerance of it. A lieutenant colonel from West Point said that the simulators used by law enforcement agencies and military, such as FATS, firearms, training simulators, and that were used to desensitize soldiers or policemen so they would be more readily would be more readily fired their guns in combat. Lastly, the sixth disadvantage of video games is that they are a great money they are great money wasters. The event the average cost of a video game is seen Singapore is upwards of thirty dollars in the years of sixty. But after one game is conquered, another one, another must be bought. Playing video games is costly pastime addiction, which is why 
Piracy is such a common phenomenon here. This is stealing, period. So in conclusion, let's face the facts both for our pros and cons, but the very fact that there are so many glaring reports against video games shows that this form of entertainment at its best shady. It is entertainment under its liberty when played in maturity. However, more often than that, it is not done so. Then it becomes an enslavement. It becomes a god. I dare say it has become one of the major gods in, in the lives of youth today. But since the average age of gamers is 28, this god is also worshipped by older folks. But by far, the ones enslaved by this god are the youth. How late do they stay up? How do they do in school? How much money do they spend on video games? Do they throw fits when parents refuse to buy them some video console? Do they play an inordinate amount of Lord of Lord Sabbath? That's enslavement and spiritual adultery. So what are we to do? Video gamers and the parents of video gamers are concerned if there is any enslavement. Very often there will be what kind of games are played. Are they shady when it comes to the theme? Very often they are. How much time is spent? Is it an order or not? Very often it is. How is, how is the con con conscience? Are they pirating games? Very often they are. What are the results of their game? Is there rebellion? Absolutely. How can any of these things be good for their spiritual health? Will there be a whole generation of spiritually lethargic, academically inspired, or physically afflicted church goers? There sure seems to be. We know what we ought to be done. And if thy right eye offended thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is probable for, for thee that, that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand defended thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee, for it is probable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Matthew 5, 29 and 30. And now, with our benediction, as a gesture. Living life to the fullest society make it, enjoy every part and every part of this life.